welcome to Harp at Home with myself, Rachel here. So, wow, we are on our eighth workshop and this was going to be the final workshop of um, this series of online harp workshops learning mainly Scottish tunes on the harp with myself. Um, but I've decided to do an extra workshop for this series. So this is our eighth and there will be just one more next Monday night. So please remember to look out for that one. And I said last week, I'm very happy to announce that I'm going to be doing a second series. It will be in August sometime, not totally sure when. Um, I'm going to be taking quite a few weeks break. First of all, to kind of teach at um, OSAS, uh, Common Ground on the Hill and Somerset Harp uh, Festival all in America, but zooming in <laughs> literally to here um, at my home here in Scotland. So I'm going to take a few weeks to teach at those and then I will resume these online harp workshops. So what are we going to be doing today? So remember, first of all, if you want to go and download uh, the PDF for today's workshop, head over to harpathome.com. Just a small amount for the PDF and that helps support me making these workshops. But yes, today we are returning to the Isle of Man and I'm going to be teaching you a song air from the Isle of Man. Um, it's a beautiful one. It might actually ring a few bells with some of you. Um, but first of all, we're going to learn a little bit about the language they speak in the Isle of Man, the Manx Gaelic. And to do that, we're going to join my friend Karis Jenia. So let's get her on a wee Zoom call. So we are joined by my friend from the Isle of Man, Karis Janet Doherty, or as I call her, and as a lot of us call her, Kaz. How are you doing, Kaz? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. So the reason I've asked uh, you to come and join us in our Harp at Home workshop is that today we're going to be learning um, a Manx song here, and it's got a bit of a Manx title. And I was wondering if you could tell um, our workshop attendees a little bit about what Manx is. Yeah, so Manx is one of the Gaelic languages, very, very closely related to Irish and Scottish Gaelic. Um, it's recently been revived. It's gone through a massive revival since the 70s. And yeah, lots of, lots of people are speaking, learning. We have a Manx medium primary school, which is great. Uh, lots of young kids learning and they're able to carry that through to secondary school as well um, yeah and obviously with songs songs and tunes we are still singing in Manx and yeah it's great yeah I, I love it like do you speak Manx yourself then I do I speak Manx um, I learnt a very little little bit at school but um, I relearnt I suppose as an adult and I am still still learning, <laughs> still go to lessons, um, which have been able to carry on through Zoom at the moment, which is, which is <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, for me, I, I kind of grew up, although I didn't ever, was never taught officially Scottish Gaelic, I was kind of brought up in a community where there were lots of Scottish Gaelic speakers. And a lot of the songs that I learned at school were always in Scottish Gaelic. And I always find it really, well, I'm used to it now, to be honest, but when I go over to the Isle of Man, like I'll see Manx written down and it looks really strange to me. To me, it looks like it's Welsh and I can't understand it until someone says <laughs> it or if say, someone says, read it phonetically, like you're reading, like you would English. And then I'm like, oh yes, actually, because I'm so used to Gaelic. Like the word kyol, I used to be spelling C-E-O-L, but you guys have the same word kyol. But how, how do you guys spell it? It's K I A U W -L, L. So the reason it looks Welsh is because it was actually first written by a Welsh man. Uh. <laughs> it looks Welsh, so it, it is quite mostly phonetical when you when you read it. It's kind of and if you if you're used to Irish or Scottish, then you would recognise a lot of words. Yeah, I've had like been over in the Isle of Man before when I've had like a, like my friend Joy Dunlop, who's a Gaelic speaker, came over with me once, and she was kind of able to understand what people were having in conversations. It was really interesting. Yeah, I think once you tune into the dialect, I find it the same when I'm listening to Gaelic speakers, especially. Um, once you kind of tune in, you can kind of pick out um, majority of what people are, are talking about and. Uh, if you get if you do a little bit of research you can learn a couple of rules which will expand your knowledge on Gaelic as well and um, just based off your manx 
Yeah. So can you teach us a couple of phrases that might interest folk? Yeah, sure. So um, we're in the afternoon right now, aren't we? So I can say fast am I, which is good afternoon. Fast am I, Cass. <laughs> um, and we can also say kiss down, which is how are you? Kiss down, Cass. Tammy Brow. I'm, I'm, I'm well, thanks. I'm well. <laughs> and can you tell, now this is a really important thing. Can you tell people how to say, I love the harp or I like harp or I play harp? Uh, so if you want to say, I play the harp, you'd say Tammy Cloy and Classic. Tammy Cloy and Classic. Now uh, in Scottish Gaelic, that would be Hanny Cloy and Classic. So again, so, so you can see how similar it is. So there you go. Well done. Well, um, listeners, I will get the spelling of those and I'll put it in our and then link section of the PDF so you can learn how to say that. So thank you very much, Kaz. Now, the tune or the song here that I'm going to be teaching people. Now, I was kind of on the board to you. We were, I was asking, oh, what, what tune do you think I could teach? And I was looking through the old collections and we were both kind of on the messenger back and forth. And I was had this tune Finger, I had my finger in it as I was flicking through the old collection and then you sent me a picture of the same tune yeah and you, I was like yeah do you mean this one that I was thinking about so um, intelligent minds as they say like minds so can you first of all I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it but could you pronounce it for us okay tau gol de figale me which means so kiri would be a girl's name and tau gol de figale me you are you're going to leave me, so it's quite sad. Oh, like I'm um, kind of carrying on the theme of kind of Scottish Gaelic songs, then of kind of general misery. Yes, misery <laughs> and uh, being heartbroken. Oh, standard kind of Gaelic themes then across across the Gaelic world. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kaz. And um, yeah, I'm going to play it to everyone now. So thank you for joining us. No problem. I hope that everyone enjoys learning it. So there you go, um, the beautiful Manx song, Er O'Kiri, Tal Gal de Fagiomi. So 
it might actually sound a little bit familiar to some of you that tune okay um it's very similar and you know when man when um, when kaz suggested it to me um and as i had it in um, my finger was in the collection as well we both kind of were great minds think alike as they say um i was like oh my goodness it sounds like it should have a second half this song it sounds like it should have a second half and then a couple of hours later it struck me it's incredibly similar to the irish air calling das crute na mo um the i think it's the the young girl the pretty young maid milking the cows i think it is it's a kind of milking song very famous one from ireland um which i've taught a few times but not for a very long time which is why i think i was just like oh that's where it came from um and i guess it just shows you if you think about where the isle of man is in the middle of the irish sea a lot of the music from the isle of man is very similar to irish music and so i'm guessing this tune might have originally come over from ireland or maybe it went the other way <laughs> you never know Ireland could be playing a Max tune, you never know. Um, so this song, um, the little bit of background that I know about it um, was that it was featured in the Clay Gill collection. Um, and the Clay Gill collection was a collection of Manx music or songs and tunes that were heard in the Isle of Man that were collected and written down. And it wasn't kind of, it wasn't widely published, this collection. It was found in the Manx Museum. But there was a man called Colin Jerry who only died around um, kind of 12 years ago now and Colin Jerry was very active in the promotion of Manx culture and especially the music and he took the time uh, to look through all these old collections that they had in the Manx Museum and on the Isle of Man and he published um, some of the kind of finest tunes and songs and most popular ones in little books which I have copies of here the famous yellow and red book. If you're from the Isle of Man, you will know about these yellow and red books. They're the kind of go-to kind of traditional books. They were published in the late late 70s, in 1978. Um, and they've been republished since by Culture Bannon. And they're full of lots of the traditional tunes that and songs that are popular on the Isle of Man. And this uh, tune is actually in the yellow book. Um, but it appears, now I kind of done a little bit of research into it, so it has words. Apparently there was only one verse originally found in the Clay Gill collection, or the song was kind of known to have one verse to it. But Colin Jerry himself wrote some additional verses. Now this is something that happens quite a lot in Manx culture. There'll be maybe a tune or a song um, and folk will want to kind of write a second part to it or new verses to it. And it's widely accepted, which I think is very exciting. It just means that the tradition is ever evolving. So this tune was republished in Kyo Nanjie book three and it has all the words in it. And it's in the Manx language, the song. And what it is, is it's talking about a man. Now we're not sure if it's, he's talking about his wife or about his lover who is going off to see, going off to England. And he's kind of talking about how much he's gonna uh, miss her and how he's really sad. And he's also really worried that she won't come back. And he's also really worried that when she comes back, she'll just be speaking English, not Manx. So yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got hay fever. <laughs> so I'm kind of spoiling that kind of romantically sad Manx Gaelic moment there with my sneezes. Um, so, Yes, yeah, so four verses, and that's what the kind of song speaks about. It's quite a haunting song. Um, I hope you enjoy learning this one. Now, um, a wee bit of kind of forewarning about this. This is, I find it quite challenging sometimes to teach slow ears by ear because there's not always a whole lot of repetition in them. So the way that I've arranged this tune is there's more repetition in the left hand, so in the accompaniment. So. Um, you might find it beneficial to be honest this isn't something that I normally say I'm usually the person to encourage learning by ear but if you do have the music with you um, as I'm taking you through this tune I take you through the melody first some straightforward still left hand and then I take you through what my thinking is uh, for the left hand patterns um, and on the pdf you'll have um, the music for the kind of three different versions I've played there for you there's also an easier version which um, I guess it might well be able to be to play be played along with that. But the thing with slow ears is that you need to give them so much space and rebattleness that it's kind of hard to play them 
um, with the space that they deserve if you're playing as a duo, if you know what I mean. So they're more solo pieces on the harp, I feel. Um, so that kind of easier version, this is a kind of solo easy version, so it still has some stillness to it. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, I kind of think looking back on it when I was teaching this, I was on a little bit of a mood when I was teaching it. Today, as I'm gazing out of Glasgow, it's Sunday just now, it is a gorgeous sunny day. But yesterday it was Saturday and that's um, when I decided to kind of film the teaching part of this. And I guess it was quite a gloomy day and I was in quite a gloomy mood, but then it's quite a gloomy tune. So I'm going down with the line <laughs> that it's suited for the tune, my style of teaching. I was a bit kind of raging to be honest. Um, I was so looking forward to going out and meeting a pal for coffee. We were going to have a socially distanced coffee wander. And just as I was getting ready to go out to meet him, um, it started pouring, completely pouring. And the forecast was saying it was going to rain for the next two hours. So I couldn't go out and meet him. So ended up doing the lesson instead. But I think my rage at the weather and the situation that currently is going on um, <laughs> may have kind of come through for a lesson so apologies for that but i hope you enjoy learning the tune and yeah um come back afterwards and we'll have a wee play there cheers okay so we are at the famous harp at home green screen and i have my harp ready to teach you this gorgeous slow song air from the Isle of Man, which is related to that famous Irish air as well. Now, hopefully we won't be disturbed. Um, it's a bit of a kind of stormy day here in Glasgow and I have whistling windows. So if you hear a kind of spooky whine, well, we'll just maybe it's kind of, we'll kind of think that it's adding to the atmosphere of this haunting arrangement of this air. That's what I'm gonna, that's the line I'm gonna take with you today anyway, so. Okay, so first of all, we need to get into the right key. Now, this tune is kind of in a kind of E minor modal kind of feel. So it has F sharps in it, but it also has C sharps in it. Okay, so for my harp that's tuned in E flat major, I have E's, A's and B's on my F sharp levers and my C sharp levers. If your harp's tuned in C major, you'll have your F sharp levers and your C sharp levers on. Okay, so this is quite um, it's quite a challenging tune to teach by ear, this one, especially more the left hand, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the melody first. We're going to add in the still chords, the kind of ones that leave lots of space. And then I'm going to show you what some of the left hand patterns are for the first time around the arrangement. And I'll quickly describe what I do for the third time and um, how I move it on a little bit. So... I'm going to play you the, fir the first part, the, the whole part. There's only really one part to this tune um, with the ornamentation in it, actually. Have a listen. So this is just the melody. tune. First little bit. We're going to start off our kind of first line. Three, two, one on E, F and G. And right away I'm going to have some grace notes, a little bit of decoration. Have a listen. I'm going to play E, F. Then I'm going to roll up as a kind of decoration. So the E, F, G is your actual melody, but I'm going to play the E and F by placing them on again after I play the E and F. And rolling up a little bit bit of decoration there. Let's try it together after two. One, two. Nice. One more time. One, two. Good. We're now going to lift our hand off. This is quite graceful this, so I find that I actually end up lifting my hand off more than I normally would if it was a fast tune. If it's a fast tune, I tend to like to stay connected to the strings of lots of crossing over, etc. With um, 
slowly or sometimes I'll lift my hand off in a kind of graceful fashion. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm lifting my hand off and then I'm going to place on B, G and F. And I'm going to play down those. Let's try that together. Let's add that on actually. Okay. I'm going to count to two and we're going to play up and then play down B, G, F. Okay. After two. One. Two. Good. Then I'm going to lift off and I'm now going to play on A, F, E and D. So I'm going down from A but missing out that G. And I'm going to add on the E afterwards. So I'm going to play down those and then quick notes at the bottom E, D, E. Let's just repeat around that. That's kind of three sections here. So we had E, F, then brushing up E, F, G. Oh, sorry. E, F, brushing up. Do you hear me? Down B, G, F. Down A, F. And E, D, E. Let's see if we can get that first line. That's our first line. After two. One, two. line that starts off with the same three notes and the little decoration at the start. And I've got a little bit of decoration at the end as well. So now we have, starting off in the same three notes, E, F and G. Let's play that together. And afterwards, in fact, I want you to add on A and B. I want you to cross under and play A and B. So you end up kind of going up those five notes. Let's try that. One, two. E, e. Let's go for it again. One, two. E, e. Now we're going to place on four, three, two, one up B, C, E, and D. So now you've got four up in a row. We're going to play up those, but when you hit the E, I want you to turn that into an A triad. So you're using your second and your C and your third and your A. I'm brushing up. So we're placing on all up four from B, but making an A triad at the end. So that section we had our E, F brushing up G, then A, B up four, and turning the last note into a brushed A triad. Okay, after two, one, Two. B, B, up four from B. And A triad. One more time. One, two. Lovely. Let's see if we can get those first two lines going together. So we've done half the melody really. So after two, E, F, and up, brushing up the G. One, two. Brushing up E, F, G. Good. Placing on down from B. And then down from A. E, F, E, two, one, two. Let's go for it again. One, two. One, two, three, one, two. Up four now from B. 
three, one, two. Lovely. Great work. Okay, remember you can pause and rewind if you need to go back to these bits. Have a listen to our next phrase. some kind of chords at the end of this that I'm going to get you to do right away. So starting off, we're going to have our thumb on D and our second on C. So we're up higher now. We're going to be going down these notes. Our third finger is going to get ready to go into the B because we're going to go down those two notes and then we're going to come up from the B brushing up. So in fact we're going down three notes and up three and then we're going to go down the next four. But these are all connected notes. So I'm going down from D to B, back up to D, and back to the A. So down three, I'm brushing up three, and down four. Let's try it together. One, two. D, C, brushing up now, and then going down to the A. It's a little bit of decoration there. One, two. Good. After that, I want you to pop your thumb onto that B. So let's just practice getting that B on. One, two. Thumb onto B. Well done. Now we're going to place on F, E, and D. And we're going to play down those. So that's going down, placing down B, F, D. And that's us bringing that back down low. Let's see if we can get all that in a row. That's quite a lot of notes. See how you get on. One, two. Place onto the B. Now go down from the F. Nice. Let's try it again. One, two. One more time. One. Two. Down to the A, B, and down from the F to the D. Good. We're going to add on two kind of peaceful, these are the kind of still parts of the tune that I like here. They sound quite unusual, and this is where it kind of um, differs a little bit from the Irish version of this here. The actual notes are E and F. I'm going to turn, turn that into C and E, so a nice kind of C third, C and E, and now C, D and F, so three, two, one. So C and E, one, two, and one, two. So C and E, two, three, one, two, C, D and F. Let's see if we can add those on. It's quite a long phrase, that. From the D, C, three, down, One, two. B, and down from the F to the D. Three C, D and F. One more time. One, two. Walking down, steady. Steady B. Now quavers. One, two, three C, D and F. One more time. One, two. Two, three, C, D and F. Lovely work. Okay, so that's quite a lot of stuff there, okay? There's not so much repetition in airs, I find, especially, um, especially in song airs, okay? So let's see if we can go from the start of what we've got so far. I know that's quite a lot of notes. Um, look at the music if you need to, or pause and rewind if you need to refresh your memory. So we have E, F, I'm brushing up, remember. One, two. So E, F, brushing up from the E, F to the G, placing on B, G, F. Now placing all four on, and coming back to the E. One, two. Brushing up again, adding on E. Four from B, adding on the A triad, which you can brush. Two, three, one, 
do new bit that we've just been working on. From the start. One, two. Listen to the final line. So this is the final bit of the melody. Okay, so we're starting off thumb on B, second on A. B, A. So it's going to go three and one, two. Three and one more time. One, two. Lovely. Now we're going to hop our thumb down to the G because we're going to have a little bit of decoration here. We're going to brush up to that G like we have at the start, like at the last two, the first line and the second line. <laughs> so we're brushing up. Okay. But we're going to connect to our notes. We're going to put our second and our third back onto the F and the E and our fourth down to the B. So that's the lowest note of the tune. So we're going one. just simply add on E, D, E. Okay, let's go from the brushing up. One, two, three. And e, D, E. Good, let's add on the first notes on because you have to hop down to there, okay? So you're going to be hopping down and placing on and brushing up from the E. After two is your count in as usual for this. One, two. Brush up. F, E, B. Now E, D, E. Let's go for that again. One, two. Brush up from E to G. Let's, let's see if we can go from the start. We'll see how we go. I'll just quickly take you through it again. So we had three, two, one. Remember, we were playing E, F and brushing up. Gracefully putting on, gracefully putting on B, G and F and playing down. Now playing down four, A, F, E, D. And ending on the E. Second phrase started off in the same way, brushing up. Adding on A and B. So it means you're going up five notes there. Up four from B. And adding on that A triad with the final E. Two, three, one, two, down from D. I'm brushing up to the D, down the four to the A. B, E, C, E, C, D, F, one, two, good. Brushing up, right the way down to the B. Lovely. Let's see if we can go for all of that. Okay. We'll try the full thing twice round. Okay. After two. One, two. One, 
One, two. Okay, so let's have a look at um, some simple left hand for this bit. Now, when I play this bit, I really push and pull it, okay? I am um, a great belief of with slow layers, it's okay to leave space. Do you know what I mean? So I'll leave kind of gaps and just enjoy the stillness of it and let your audience enjoy it as well. I've kept the harmony incredibly simple in this tune as well. In fact, I'm really only using three chords. Um, an E minor, a B minor and an A chord as well so really not a lot going on at all but I'm trying to get across that kind of haunting feel about the tune and about the song okay so have a listen to what I've added in for this first time round <laughs> some bits where I'm kind of pushing it and I'm kind of speeding it up slightly and then some bits where I'm leaving the gaps even more okay so all these chords pretty much are on well they're all on the beat and um, there's only one bit where there's one chord that doesn't last for a full bar so I'm using three main patterns I'm using an E minor 7 so E B and G I'm using a B seven so b f and a so both these chords have got the third missing so they're reasonably open okay so it's a little bit nicer than it's just adding a little bit of edginess okay so my first line i'm gonna have a e7 and then down to the b7 and then i'm gonna go right the way down to a 158 chord e158 chord i've spoken about those before fourth finger in e second in b thumb on e Okay. It's going to be very much on the beat, okay? Now, your first two notes are coming on three and, so your E7 is coming with the first beat. So that comes with the G. Your B is going to come with the F. And your low E with the first of the E's here. So, our E with the G. So E7, so E, B, D, B, F, A, and then moving to E, B, E, okay? One, two. Let's go for it again, okay? So in fact, all these four phrases are going to start with the E for three beats, two, three, and then the B7 chord for three beats, okay? After two. One, two. Two, three, B chord. Two, three, low, E, one, five, A. One, two. Let's go for it again. One, two. Lovely. Our 
next bit we're going to have the E chord again, the E7, B7 again, but we're going to change instead of going to an E158, we're going to go to an A158 and that's going to match up with our E triad section in our right hand. So again we have our E chord with the G after two. One, two. Our B chord is going to come with the B that starts when we're going up the four notes. And as I said before, we're going to have our A158 with our A triad and we're going to brush really from the bottom right up to the top there. So we had E with the G, with the second B, which is the one that you played with your fourth finger, we have the B7, and then the A chord. Let's go for that. After two. One, two. chord and now for our E. Nice. So that's a bit where I tend to leave it even longer than the actual five counts it deserves. After two. One, two. E7 with the G. With the second B, the B7. Now the A158 with the A. Okay, so as I said, each line here starts with the E chord and the B chord. So we're back to our E7. This time though, it's going to come with that D. So you end up kind of brushing up because we had these, with all these bits, have got three notes at the start of um, our decoration of those, those lines. It ends up, I like to kind of brush from the bottom up top so that it kind of becomes part of the chord. Do you know what I mean? Just something I like to do. So E chord, down the fourth when we hit the A, that's when our B's going to come. Okay, that'll sound a little bit unusual, but trust me, it'll be alright. Let's try that little section. One, two. The A, the B7. One more time. One, two. have your thumb placing the B, F, E and D are about to come down. Have a listen to this bit and then I'm going to take you through it. Okay, this is my favourite part of the tune list. So this is when we're moving off our kind of standard 1, 5, 8 and those 7 chords. So we're playing that B, when we hit that D, we're going to have a, just a B and an A, so we're not mm -hmm. having the 7th in it. Okay, so it's a nice and I really like that chord. Then we had our C and E in the melody. We could have an A octave with that. Okay, but what I want you to do is sympathetic damping before you play that A octave so that that B note doesn't bleed into it. Otherwise, it's going to be, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. It's nice. Then we're going to go back to the B and the A for the C, D and the F. Okay, so we had with the D, B and A, then the C and E here, an A octave, back to your B and A in your bass with the C, D and the F. So your left hand's going, your thumb's staying constant on the A, we're going to have a B in the bass. A in the bass and then a B in the bass. Okay, have a listen to how that whole of that line goes. And I like to really kind of separate that little bit. Okay, you're going to find that I use this, these three kind of bits in all of the three versions of this. Okay, that's in your music. Let's see if we can go for that. After two. One, two. B7 with the A. Got our nice still bit. Three, one, two. Good. And now that last one has a beat of one, two before on to the next bit. That's a bit where I'll draw it out. I'll normally leave that one for a lot longer than it's kind of strictly written in the music. On to the fourth phrase now, remember what you're doing with your melody. So 
again, B, A, we're brushing up to our G, so we've got our E7. Friendly enough, when we hit our B here, we're going to run E7. Okay, so let's see if we can get that after two. One, two. second arrangement okay we're not going to worry too much about that just now i'd like to see if we can go for all of those four lines together speaking very peaceful and gentle to you today this is how a cat this tune is having a calming effect to me today it's kind of reflective of the greenness and the torrential rain and wind which is happening outside the window just now dear me um yeah let's go <laughs> so get your e7 b7 and e158 for the first phrase e7 B7, then you had your A chord, because that matched up with the A triad. Third line was the E7, B7, then that kind of still bit that we just did. And then E7, B7, then we've not done the final note, because that's going to lead on to what's happening. Let's see if we can go for that. Remember, pause and rewind if you need to. One, two. Okay, so let's progress to um, the second time round, okay? I'm going to kind of take you through this. It's maybe best, to be honest, I'm usually one who's all kind of all for teaching by ear, but this is quite, um, it's, it's maybe beneficial if you kind of look at the music for this one as you're playing it, or as you're learning it, I should say, not necessarily as you're going to play it, but as you're learning it with me, so I can kind of refer back to this. So... Um, we have this, I'm a kind of fan of a pattern. <laughs> okay, so the idea with this arrangement that I'm thinking is I've got this kind of first part, which is very kind of open, and then it's kind of been moving on and it's getting a lot more rhythmical with what's going on in the left hand. Okay, so I've got that space idea, and then things become a little bit kind of more rhythmical, and it's almost like a kind of, I guess a kind of stream starting to get a little bit, you know, faster and flowing. Um, yeah, so our, we've got two main patterns, which are based on the E and the D chord. Okay, so our first one. Now I'm going to take you through this pattern. When you're putting the left hand together, though, don't feel that you need to do all of the pattern. Take, like, the first three notes of the pattern and build it in. Okay, I've spoken about this before, actually. You don't have to do all the left hand as you're learning it, okay? Have a look at the bar, what's going on. Maybe take the first kind of three kind of quavers for example which is what I'm going to be showing you here and just build it in gradually so that you can at least get a little bit of satisfaction that you're playing something with the melody okay it'll help you your kind of yeah kind of help your well-being to to get something back from the tune instead of like just spending ages in one section trying to get every single note on and um, yeah so the pattern for this is Lots of quavers going on, eighth notes if I'm speaking in right American terminology. Fourth finger is going right down to that bass E if you've got the bass E. Then I'm hopping up to the E and the B. So I've got E, then using my second and my thumb on the E fifth, so it's in E and the B. So we've got E, E, B. Okay, so that's your kind of first three notes that you could use if you're wanting to introduce things gradually. Okay, but what I'm doing is I'm going to play down I'm looking kind of for patterns again. I'm going down B, A, G, those three white notes, and then playing the B again. So we've got E, 
seven chord the exact same one that we had before but we're playing up it we're gonna go one and two three okay let's try all of that one two three e e b a g b up b is right b okay let's see if we can get that going around a few times okay because it's a pattern that is repeated okay after three one Two, three. first part so you had your last three notes and our pattern starts right there two three and again that was a nice break section okay and then for the next part for our first line we're going to have the pattern comes around twice in that line okay so remember we had before the e chord and the b chord and then a low e chord so for that first E chord comes, okay, that's where your first E pattern happens. Have a listen. Where your B chord came, which was with the F, that's where we start doing our B pattern. And then we had the E chord came with the first E, so we're gonna have our E pattern. And we fill it in also with the B pattern. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of get that going. You've essentially, our melody is a lot of quavers. So a lot, a lot not sorry, it's a lot of crotchets. So it's a lot of coordinates. <laughs> so on the beats, okay. We usually end up having, it's kind of two left hand notes to each of the right hand notes because you've got quavers in your right hand, in your left hand, crotchets with your left, okay. So our E pattern, is starting off with the G here. Our Bs are gonna come together. G's together and then our uh, B chord comes with the F okay so I think we should just kind of try and play this really slowly together it's going to be quite a job to kind of match the notes up okay after two after two, I'm going to count, and then on the three, my right hand starts, and our left hand is going to start with the G. Okay, remember two left hand notes to every right hand note for just now. One, two. Good, and with the F, we're going to come up the B chord, thumbs together, so A's together here. So the next bit of our right hand, we're going up to the B, and 
then four up from B so you end up with two B's in the row and we have our A triad. Okay so for this we're gonna have our E pattern again for the first bit. Have a listen. Okay so that works with the So with the G, the A, and with the B, that's where our left hand comes. Two left hand notes to every right hand. Let's try that little bit. One, two. Okay, so remember, if you just want to just do that little bit, you can, okay? Let's have a go of all three. One, two. Now place on up four because we have up four from B and an A triad. Okay, now we're going to have our B chord here, but actually I'm going to repeat the B chord of the octave. So we have B F A is our B seven, turning under B F A one and two and three and. That's going to go when we go up those four notes. Let's see if we can get that going together. So two left hand notes to every right hand note. Two, three. One, two, three. Then you have your A triad. Let's try that again. Two, three. Okay, now that sounds strange because we've not got anything with that A chord there. So we're going to add in an A158 because our thumb's in that A already. We're going to start playing up the A158, but we're going to have to break it up because we can't actually play it together because our third finger's there. So we're going to go up one and two. One and two, three. And I like to just add another A in the bottom there for the crack. Let's see if we can go up four from B. And we have our double B7. Two, three. line my um I'll count myself in if you want to join in go for it one two up your B sevens and up your A chord two three one two lovely let's go for it together one two I kind of tend to do a swell dynamically with that, get louder, because we're kind of flowing up the harp. Okay, let's put those two lines together. We'll see how we go from the start of that uh, second tempo. One, two. and our B7 chord again. Have a listen. It connects up here with our thumbs to this bit, which should be familiar. Okay, so we did this section before, if you remember. We had our, when we're going down B, F, A, our B and A. Remember the considerate damping, A octave, so that thumb stays in the A there. And then brush it up. So this is when we're joining up our new E pattern and our new B pattern with that. So we have brushing up and our E pattern, two left hand notes to every right hand note again. With the A here, we've got our B chord, thumbs together here. B7, our B and A, A octave. Are still moment there. Let's see if we can get that light. One, two. Three and brush up. Nice. Let's 
chord part again. One, two. Good. And we're on to our ending phrase. Have a listen to me playing it first. So again, we've got two left hand notes to every right hand note. A is our usual lead on notes and then we're brushing up from our E to our G here so this is where our E pattern starts off this time our B comes with our B chord comes with our B here thumbs together and our E pattern to finish off with the B pattern of course after it let's try that phrase together at that line as you see one Two. A B chord. One, two, B and a B chord. Nice. Okay, one more time. One, two. So that's quite a lot of stuff going on. The best thing I can suggest with this one is that you take it slowly. Okay, this is our second time around the tune, remember. Okay, so we have our three versions on your music for this, and there's also a kind of easier arrangement of the tune once through, um, which is a little bit different. Um, have a look and see what you think of that. But this is our second time round. Okay, so let's see if we can go for all of that. Okay, follow from the top of the page if you want to on the music. One, two. So that's our second time round. Now, what I like to do after that is I like to play the arrangement up again up the octave. Now, you have a couple of options here. You could literally lead, like use that exact arrangement and play it up the octave. But what I've given you is a little variation. Okay, so for this, instead of the first E pattern and the B pattern, what I've done is I've just done a kind of scale pattern up from E for when I play it up the octave. Okay, so this is just a little bit of variation. So you've just done your E chord there. And then I like to play that up the octave to start us kind of going on here. Have a listen to what I do here. Okay, so what's happening there is I'm just literally playing up from E and then instead of doing that big E pattern, I'm just going one, two, three, four, five, six, scale from E to C. Then our B7, I'm adding on an extra three notes, so I'm crossing under and playing that from the B E. Have a listen. And then I'm returning back to the E pattern that I had before. So there's a little bit of kind of cohesiveness kind of matching it up and you know, that kind of room, um, repetition idea a little bit. So we've not got repetition in the melody so much in this, but there's repetition in the accompaniment. So our brain has something to hold on. Have a listen to that again. And then for this bit, I have the same idea, this new E pattern. But again, I'm adding on notes all the way up to the 
piece. I'm just adding on all the way up there. Okay. Next bit, our new E pattern. Our new B pattern. This is our kind of still bit. So I am playing it the same for just now. So I have it with the B and the A. But with this bit, this is when I'm going to merge it up and I'm going to do my B and the A down the octave, but keep the right hand where it is. Okay, so I've been up high, then I'm splitting them up slightly. Because after that, then I'm moving back down to what is familiar. I kind of identified a point where you know I'd I'd raised the whole of the melody up the octave, been playing, it, and then I identified a point when I was like, I'm gonna return it back down to normal to finish off the tune. Okay, so that's what my thinking is behind it. Kind of brought it up high to kind of a relative stillness, and then bringing it back down to the familiar there. Okay, so have a listen to that this third time round. hold their breath and then back to the familiar for the ending bit. music there you kind of end up both hands going down at the same time following the same direction I guess three then the same pattern and also four okay so you can have a look at that yourself so yeah that's kind of the what I've gone for in this that tune and um, make of it what you will um, I guess with this this kind of lesson it wasn't so much about teaching you the arrangement it was more about kind of showing you different possibilities of stuff like this tune as I said there's not a lot of repetition in it so I've chosen instead to have repetition in the left hand um, rhythmical repetition and chordal repetition okay we've only got E minor E minor and A major chords throughout the whole of this. Okay, there's no other harmony. So really restricted things. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I'll let you hear um, the version that I played in front of the fireplace again. And then we'll have a wee blather. Cool, thank you.
So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning that Manx slow air. It's a beautiful tune. There really are lots of great tunes in the Isle of Man. So I really do encourage you to explore more about the island, its music, its culture, and of course, its language. Um, huge thanks again to Karis Jenna, to Kaz, for joining us for the wee interview at the start of uh, today's workshop. And yeah, hope you picked up a few kind of wee Manx sayings there. I'll put them in the PDF as well so that you can redo them. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Manx language, if you head to learnmanx.com, it's a great website run by Culture Vannin, who are the great kind of traditional arts, culture and language agency on the island. And they really do a great job um, of kind of promoting the language. And there's lots of resources there if you fancy learning a little bit of Manx. Um, yeah, and if you'd like to learn Manx, some more Manx music, um, my books class app are still available as PDF downloads and as hard copies on my website. If you'd like to learn more Manx music direct from myself, you can of course come to Somerset Heart Festival this July where one of my workshops is on Manx music. Um, that's one of the live workshops and I pre-recorded another. So there's another two Manx tunes just waiting to be talked to you by myself if you head to Somerset Heart Festival. So I, so what have I been, been up to this week? Well, I was saying before we kind of did the learning bit of the workshop that I was a little bit raging before I taught the workshop because I couldn't go out and see my pal and actually my pal that I was heading out to was a ex-student of mine, a lad called Neil Woods who, Neil is, I just, I adore Neil, he's kind of like a little brother to me um, and I've known him since he was very young. Um, I taught him his first ever Clarshock lesson, lesson at a face in Neilston. Neilston is just outside of Glasgow. It's where Neil from Neilston, where Neil is from. And um, he got his first harp lesson with me. He got weekly harp lessons with me right up until um, when he left, left me oh, to go to the Royal Conservatory of Scotland, where he has just, or I should say just, he's just finished his degree in traditional music. And I'm so proud of him. Um, he had four amazing years there and he's really grown as a Clarshock player. He was always a gut string Clarshock player when he was with me, um, but he went to the RCS and he's discovered a real love and passion for the wire strong heart. And I'm so excited for someone to be taking that on in Scotland. There's not a lot of wire harp string players just now in Scotland and for someone to have such an active interest and passion in it, who is so young, is just really exciting. And he's got a real um, thirst to learn more about the old tunes from Scotland and the real traditional music that was written for the Clarsach. So yeah, I was so looking forward to catching up with him yesterday. We were gonna have a long distance wander, but the plan is, if the weather sticks, tomorrow afternoon we're gonna have it. And yeah, he's, he's done his final recital. He's done everything that he needs to do. So it's just a case of waiting to hear his results from the RCS um, and to see if he's good to graduate, uh, to graduate, which I'm just, I'm so excited for him and I'm so proud of him. And I love that he's still my pal now and it's great. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to see him tomorrow. If you want to find out more about him, actually, this is his website. And um, please also like his Facebook page because it would make his day if he got more Facebook likes. I think he had a video um, of him playing wire string harp. I think it's on his Facebook page. Um, I'll maybe link to that as well, um, but you can maybe explore it because it's certainly worth exploring. Um, aye, what else have I been up to? Um, I'm trying to think now. Um, oh, I've been purchasing. Do you like my new t-shirt? This is some merch, some band merch by um, from my pals, uh, Project Smock. Project Smock is a kind of trio um, they describe them as themselves as neo trad, so kind of new trad music. Great lads, Ali Lovac, who's the current uh, BBC Young Traditional Musician of the Year. Um, uh, Pablo Pablo Lapuente, who is a good pal. He keeps on helping me um, pronounce Galician and Asturian tunes. I keep on messaging him on Facebook when I'm doing workshops, saying, "Pablo, any chance you could voice memo me the uh, pronunciation of this tune?" He's total star, Pablo. Um, and Ewan Baird as well and they're a great trio. I highly recommend uh, looking up their music. Um, this is their website and uh, they have a new album called Bayview which was released not that long ago and it's just really exciting to see good trad music or trad inspired music coming out of Scotland if you know what I mean. They're great lads and so yeah 
support them by buying some merch. Um, I might get some merch available for Harp at Home at some point. Um, I think I'm going to get some little stickers or badges or something. I'll maybe explore that a little bit um, and see what I can come up with. And aye, what am I up to this week? What do you wear? We're on Sunday. I'm going to go out for a big long walk in a second because it isn't raining. It's beautiful sunshine. So I'm going to pack up pack up all this uh, uh, filming gear and then go off for a long walk and then yeah walking is going to be the theme I think this week because I'm going to do that myself just now and then I'm meeting Neil tomorrow I'm going to meet my auntie on Tuesday night for a wander and then um, yeah see what the rest of the week brings us on Thursday we should hopefully be hearing from our boss FM First Minister Nicola Sturgeon if we can move on to phase two here in Scotland so right now we're only allowed to meet one other household outside um, per day. So, but on Thursday, it might be that we might be able to have people in our houses. We might be able to meet more people outside. Um, yeah, it's a waiting game. We'll see what they say. I don't think we'll be fully able to move to phase two myself. I think we might just do some things from phase two this week and then maybe next week things might move on further. So it's exciting. Slightly nervy as well about moving to these different phases. It's it. I'm kind of a little bit apprehensive because this has become the new normal, which I'm not liking. Life is just kind of normal. Kind of get up in the morning, have a leisurely breakfast, coffee, mooch it down, check emails, and then do filming or Zoom lessons. Um, it's becoming a little bit too comfortable. Um, yeah. So uh, we, we could do with some change. I am kind of itching to get out there and travelling again. Right now I'm meant to be in Japan and then I would have been going over to the US for OSAS. So, but you know, it's cool. I would just be happy right now if I could travel to Stirling and see my family. That would be really cool. See my wee niece and nephew. But easy goes and easy does it. So it's the safest way. So we're all obeying Nicola for our FM, our First Minister. So hopefully she'll have some good news for us on Thursday. But I am... Um, Please join me as ever next week. Next week will be our last Harp at Home workshop for this series, for this season, if we're talking American. Um, I'm going to come back in, April, in August, as I said, um, to teach you some more tunes. Um, but remember, all these workshops are still online and you can still purchase all the music online. I think it might be that we rejig the website slightly when this series ends. You might have to click within a link to go to another page to see it all. And the same in the website shop, you might have to click a link to get into there. I don't know, that involves a little bit of housekeeping. We'll see when I get onto that one. Um, but things might change a little bit, but you will be able to access everything. Okay, um, for our final tune next week, I think we're going to finish off with a Scottish one. I started off with a 2-4 March and then we did a Stuff Spee and it was a Highland Stuff Spee. And next week I'm going to take you to the North East. And to do teach you a Strathspey by none other than the Strathspey King himself, Mr. James Scott Skinner, J.S. Skinner. Um, he was the kind of the number one composer for <laughs> composing Strathspeys in Scotland. Um, and he wrote some cracking tunes. So I'm going to teach you a Skinner tune. It's quite an unusual one, actually. I've not really ever heard people play it, um, but it's a beautiful one um, from one of his collections. The name escapes me. But it's in the RCS library because Neil found it. I got Neil to find it in the RCS library for me. And he took a photo and said, this one, who's total star. Um, so yeah, we'll do a Skinner tune next week. So thank you very much and have a good week. Um, keep safe. Keep playing through all these tunes. Um, it'll be last last workshop and last leather section next week. So if you've anything you want to ask me or anything, just send me a wee message. And yeah, good to see you. Good to have your company. Cheers. See you soon.